Hello and welcome to our lecture series of Biology for SSC CGL. In this particular lecture, now we are starting about bacterial diseases. We have so far done viral diseases, the diseases which are caused by virus. Now we'll be doing diseases which are caused by bacteria. So in this particular lecture, we'll learn about bacteria, uh, then typhoid fever, tuberculosis, leprosy, and cholera. Let's move forward. A brief introduction about me. My name is Aman Srivastava. I've done B.Tech in Electronics and Communication from IET Lucknow. I've cleared SSC CGL 2016 Pre Plus Mains. You can follow me on Unacademy and please rate, review and do share the lecture. See, bacteria are divided in two classes, aerobic and anaerobic. Let me first explain you these terms aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic means in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic means without the presence of oxygen, right? Bacteria are acellular organisms and are always living in atmosphere, unlike virus. See, virus were, uh, virus were dead as well as living, right? But bacteria are always living in atmosphere and they are acellular. That means they do not have any cell in them. Clear? Bacteria was discovered by Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. This is the name of the scientist which is often asked in SSC CGL that who discovered bacteria. So it is Antony van Leeuwenhoek. He also invented compound microscope and first living cell. And which was that living cell? It was a sperm cell. Clear? See, sometimes SSC confuses you. It asks that who invented simple microscope. So simple microscope is someone else. It is actually Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke. H-O-O-K. But compound microscope is Antony van Leeuwenhoek. You have to keep this in mind. Do not get confused because SSC actually tries to confuse you here. Now, he is also called as father of bacteriology. He is who he? He here he refers to Antony van Leeuwenhoek. Now, what are those diseases that we are going to study? First of all is typhoid fever. So, which is the bacteria responsible for typhoid fever? It is Salmonella Paratyphi or you can also call it Salmonella typhi. Affected part is small intestine. The small intestine gets affected and as soon as the patient eats anything or drinks anything, it's at the same time it the person either the patient either vomits or it passes out through loose motion. Transmission, how does it gets to human by contaminated water. Water, see if you eat or drink uh, at un un unhygienic places, then it is highly likely that you may get typhoid fever. So that's why it is always advised that you always eat or drink at hygienic places. Now the test for typhoid fever is Vidal test. It takes 72 hours to get completed. It takes 72 hours to get the uh, proper report, but now with the modern race, with the modern technology, the time has uh, reduced quite a lot. But in essential, it took, it used to take at least 72 hours. And then comes tuberculosis. The bacteria for that is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Affected part, lungs and other organs. It could be lung TB, it could be bone TB, it could be brain TB sometimes, right? It depends where the bacteria has attacked. The transmission is by air or by housefly. The scientific name for housefly is Musca domestica or by sputum. The test for tuberculosis is tuberculin test and the vaccination vaccination is BCG vaccination bacillus calmet and guerin is the full form bacillus calmet and guerin now dots is a mission by WHO it's free of cost six month treatment for TB tuberculosis now tuberculosis is not a very I mean it's not a you can you can't ignore this kind of disease because it's a very you can say it's a grave disease and it is actually very it is actually looked down in the society if a person has tb people look down that person so this particular disease also i mean see let me explain you one thing why it is said that passive smoking is harmful actually the bacteria of tb is there in almost everyone's lungs but it is always dead it's your immune system that makes this bacteria dead and not alive but let's say if someone if someone has this bacteria alive in his lungs and when that person smokes out now the smoke that comes out from that person's mouth also carries that living tuberculosis bacteria that is living mycobacterium tuberculosis 
so what that ha- what happens then that bacteria when it is that smoke when it is inhaled by you actually that bacteria is also being inhaled by you that's why you also run the chance of have getting the tuberculosis if your immune system is low clear that's why it is said that whenever a person smokes then you please make i mean you please stand away from that person clear leprosy is now leprosy is a very contagious disease it spreads very fast that's why you know government what uh, what does it do is government makes separate housing localities for these patients suffering with leprosy in hospitals they have separate department they are not treated with normal patients because if they are treated with normal patients normal patients also run the risk of running into this leprosy now the affected part for this is first of all let's see the bacteria it's mycobacterium lepri the affected part is skin and nervous system loss of sensitivity happens see for example if you take a pen and you pinch it against your skin on your hand you'll see feel some sensations or you'll see feel some pointed things touching your hand but a person with leprosy whenever you just uh, pinch your uh, that pen against the hand it will not feel anything that's called loss of sensitivity that that happens when when nervous system is attacked so this bacteria attacks the nervous system the transmission is person to person by touch see that's why government keeps these patients in a separate locality because even by touching this particular uh, disease can get transmit the bacteria for this is found under nails that's why it is called, it is said that you always keep your uh, nails filed right you always pare your nails clear the treatment for this is mdt the treatment for leprosy is called mdt mdt is multi drug therapy now coming on to cholera cholera is again an epidemic disease epidemic means which spreads in a region the bacteria for that is vibrio coma or vibrio cholerae why the name is such like uh, such that vibrio coma because the bacteria is actually a coma shaped like this 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 is this is the this is a rough shape of the bacteria that's why it's called vibrio coma the bacteria for cholera the symptoms are excessive vomiting and loose motions the person can't even sit for like just say he can't even sit for 30 35 minutes without vomiting and uh, or if as soon as the person has eaten a thing simply he will run for either to vomit or to or for loose motions the affected organs for cholera are s- stomach and small intestine see whenever small intestine in any in any disease if small intestine gets affected then you can be sure of one thing that vomiting and loose motions will be there if infection occurs in small intestine right and if it occurs in large intestine then pain will be there now the transmission how gets it tra- how it gets transmitted via contaminated food during summer season during summer when contaminated food is eaten then this basically occurs because the bacteria again the same thing bacteria actually in the summer season the bacteria multiplies very fast you know why uh, we keep uh, various things in refrigerator because in the colder the place is the lesser the chance of multiplication of bacteria that's why we keep all our uh, all our things in all our edibles basically all our edibles in refrigerator because the temperature is cold and in cold temperatures bacteria can't multiply so easily but in warm temperatures basically the summer temperatures in this 40 to 45 degree temperature it's very suitable for bacteria to get multiplied all right thank you so much students i think you would have liked this lecture and if yes please rate and review about the lecture and if you have any question regarding this you can ask in the question answer tab which is there at the bottom thank you so much hello and welcome to our lecture series on biology for ssc cgl this particular lecture deals with bacterial diseases it's a continuation of our bacterial diseases lecture that we are going on through now in this particular lecture we will be dealing about diseases such as tetanus whooping cough pneumonia plague and food poisoning now let's see a brief introduction about me my name is aman srivastava i've done btech in electronics and communication from iet lucknow i've cleared ssc cgl 2016 pre plus mains you can follow me on an academy and please rate review and do share the lecture now see let's understand first about tetanus tetanus is also called lock jaw or bow shaped disease why because in tetanus what happens is the person or the patient who is suffering from tetanus the jaw becomes very tight 
even is not able to open the jaw for just to eat food as well someone else is required to open the jaw and then the food is dropped in the mouth of the patient this happens in tetanus also why it's called as bow shaped disease because the body becomes so stiff it becomes so stiff that when the person lies on the bed the back the spinal cord portion appears to be raised a bit and its body develops an arc shape a bow shape the body develops a bow type shape right that's what's called a bow shaped disease now what's the bacteria responsible for it it's clostridium tetani it's called as clostridium tetani how does bacteria enters it enters often through puncture wounds caused by nails that are basically rusted nails the nails on which rusting was there or rusting is there why are these it is caused splinters insect bites burns or any skin break is there then the bacteria enters there that's why it is said that whenever even when you uh, when a person meets with a uh, road accident or a person accidentally uh, punctures himself with a nail or he gets a uh, cut with a junked knife or some junk iron piece it is advice it is advisable that he should he should get the vaccination for tetanus within 24 hours all right the treatment is anti tetanus serum it is made up from horse it is made up of from horse now the latent period latent period means when this bacteria gets activated to show its effect it's 24 hours 24 hours after 24 hours the bacteria starts its whole complete mechanism or it starts its activity so if within 24 hours if you take them and this uh, anti tetanus serum ats then it's all fine now ats is very easily available in all the public health care centers and all the nursing homes and everywhere it's a uh, very cheap as well it uh, costs mostly near about 30 rupees now whooping cough the bacteria is haemophilus pertussis it affects the respiratory system that's why the cough the sound of cough is like a dog bark the transmission it travels by air and you have to remember the vaccination you have to remember two things bacteria as well as the vaccination for this vaccination is d tap d tap in children and t dap in adults you have to remember both of them because ssc may ask you both of them it's d tap in children and t dap in adults now coming on to another uh, very common disease very commonly heard disease is pneumonia the bacteria for pneumonia is streptococcus pneumoniae the bacteria for pneumonia is streptococcus pneumoniae the affected part is lungs and what happens in this is breathlessness takes place a person is not even if a person walks a bit let's say even if he walks 50 meters the person will be gasping the person will be gasping a lot for breath because he he will not be able to catch his breath breathlessness occurs in this uh, this particular disease pneumonia the vaccination is pcv and ppv you don't have to remember the full forms it's called it's simply pcv and ppv as as in ssc cgl now this is highly moisture dependent disease september october it is transmitted by air the pneumonia bacteria is transmitted by air now let's see about plague plague is a epidemic disease that means it is a contagious disease and it spreads really fast it spreads at a really fast rate latur in india latur in maharashtra was very very affected by this particular disease once uh, it was in uh, early or middle 80s that latur was affected from this uh, plague it was a complete epidemic was there and then government extended its support to uh, curb this uh, menace out there now coming on to the bacteria of plague so the bacteria of plague the name is pastorella pestis what it affects which part it affects it affects the lymph nodes what are the f- symptoms high fever and conjunctivitis high fever and conjunctivitis now what is conjunctivitis conjunctivitis is basically the eyes get super red the eyes get red you will have irritation see itis is there remember what we have done itis if in any um, in any disease itis is there as this uh, suffix then you can uh, understand that heat will be there redness will be there and uh, pain will be there so all these symptoms appear in eyes okay the vector who transmits this disease rats the parasite of rats called pissu 
the parasite of rat is called pisu you have to remember only this that rats transfer transmit this disease right that's why it is said that whenever you keep your food in the kitchen always keep it covered because see what will happen is let's say if your food is not covered it's uh, there open the rat will come it will take a small bite from it and then it will go on its way but at the same time it will leave its saliva on your food and the saliva of the rat is infected with this uh, the spasorella pectis uh, pestis bacteria and as soon as you will eat it you might run the risk of getting into this disease okay let's move forward food poisoning now food poisoning is very very common among the people who are living in basically hostels uh, away from their home because it basically occurs from the food that you eat outside at un unhygienic places what is the bacteria responsible for it see i have listed here all the bacteria responsible for it but in essence you have to remember salmonella e coli or the full form is escherichia coli uh, you have to remember is just as e coli then and botulism these are the three main bacteria for food poisoning right the affected part is stomach now how why does it happen see or what we should not eat so that i mean we can we can at least remain uh, abstain from this so that is all these starch related food all these starch related food you try to avoid in high heat temperatures for example in summers in uh, north india in uh, summers like let's say from april to june try to avoid these starch rich food peas pulse then uh, that potato right because what happens in this is uh, the bacteria gets a very favorable in starch related in starch rich foods bacteria gets a very favorable atmosphere in summers so it develops very fast so even if your immune is so strong then also you might run the risk of running into food poisoning running into, running into the uh, surrendering to the attack or invasion of these particular bacteria clear so thank you so much please rate review and do share the lecture hello and welcome to our lecture series on biology for ssc cgl in this particular lecture we'll see about bacterial and protozoan diseases we'll cover two of the remaining bacterial diseases and then we'll move on to protozoan diseases the two bacterial diseases are anthrax and diphtheria that we'll be covering and then protozoan diseases will be malaria kala azar and sleeping sickness a brief introduction about me my name is aman shravastava i've done btech in electronics and communication from iet lucknow i've cleared ssc cgl 2016 pre plus mains you can follow me on an academy and please rate review and do share the lecture see first of all anthrax now the bacteria for anthrax is bacillus anthracis the bacteria is bacillus anthracis now which part does it affect so it affects lungs and skin it is transmitted mainly through sheep the people who live near the sheep and uh, sheep and goats they are more likely to get affected by it now anthrax is, was once used by al qaeda as biological weapon when in 2000 when this is just for your general information now uh, let me tell you what's the impact of biological weapon why it is so harmful it's biological weapons are actually deadly they are more lethal than anything else for example suppose if somehow the any let's say these kind of terror groups if they infect any water body with this particular with any particular virus with any particular virus say let's say let's say in uh, new delhi yamuna is there now what uh, let's assume that what they do is they take a virus they take a self multiplying virus the virus that grows on itself and they infect the river yamuna with it now what will happen the virus will keep on multiplying and it will infect whole of the river right it will liver it will infect whole of the river now all the surrounding area where the water of yamuna goes the people will be consuming it all the crops will be consuming it everything will get infect similarly if this biological virus is spread in the air then also every person that breathes that air will get infected so that's why it is called as the most lethal form of the weapon because to control it the control is not at all available i mean it's really very really tough because you can't limit the uh, danger because you can't limit the effect 
it will go on to increase and go on and go on and go on it will like that and that's why the united nations has put a ban on biological weapons right so that was just i mean that was just for your general information now coming on to diphtheria diphtheria is a childhood disease and the bacteria you have to remember for that is conebacterium diphtheriae conebacterium diphtheriae now what happens in this is in the front part of the neck a false membrane is formed false membrane means a kind of uh, a swelling takes place in the front part of the neck clear the transmission for that is by air and the vaccine for that is triple antigen vaccine dpt the vaccine for diphtheria is dpt the full form is diphtheria pertussis tetanus now protozoan diseases see protozoans are unicellular remember bacteria were acellular bacteria didn't have didn't have any cell now protozoans are unicellular they have they are single cellular organisms for example amoeba paramecium euglena they are just example remember them for the sake of examination that the examples of protozoa amoeba paramecium and euglena now coming on to the diseases caused by protozoans malaria first of all very uh, common disease the parasite for malaria is plasmodium parasite it's called plasmodium parasite they complete their primary life cycle in mosquitoes and secondary in humans now let me first explain you what's the meaning of this line because you might be encountering this line in many diseases primary host and secondary host you might be reading the newspaper in that also sometime it is there that this virus for this virus this is primary host and this is secondary host so let's understand what is it see primary host is actually the host or the body the body in which the virus matures the virus matures and multiplies and secondary host is the host or the body in which the virus starts to affect or the virus starts to create the what destruction or it try or it starts to spread disease clear that is the reason why the mosquito itself although mosquito has this parasite but why doesn't mosquito get the malaria have you ever imagine this why does since the mosquito has this uh, has this kind of parasite so why does mosquito itself don't get the uh, malaria the reason is that in them it only completes their primary life cycle it does not have the environment required environment to develop the secondary to get into the secondary life cycle that environment is provided by us human body clear now most infectious stage of a protozoa is sporozoite sporozoite is actually the after maturity it's a stage in the secondary life cycle now you must be understanding it better that what is secondary life cycle clear now malarial parasite releases a toxin known as hemozin hemozin now what happens is this hemozin is actually responsible for the acute shivering that takes place in a malarial patient what happens is sometimes in malaria the person shivers a lot the person feels an intense chill along its body why that is because of this toxin hemozin okay now contaminated air it uh, the protozoa gets transferred by contaminated water and air now malaria fever is transferred by anopheles mosquito you have to remember this name that was the name of the mosquito name of the mosquito is anopheles okay now don't get confused in malaria and dengue dengue was aegis aegypti and this is malaria is, is anopheles ssc whenever it will give you the malaria for malaria it will also give you in the options it will also give you the virus for dengue as well but you have to be very uh, smart while selecting your answers clear the affected part in this is rbcs and spleen now which part is, is uh, one question often comes in the exams which part is known as graveyard of rbc so it's the spleen spleen is known as the graveyard of rbcs clear anti malaria drug which drug is given for malaria for to prevent malaria that is quinine and it is obtained from the bark of cinchona tree now moving on to the next one kala azar Now see, Kala Azar is still present in Bihar in the vicinity of Kosi River. Kala Azar is still present in Bihar in the vicinity of Kosi River. It is in Africa. This particular Kala Azar is known as Dum Dum Fever. In examination, they ask sometimes that which which of these is known as Dum Dum Fever. So the answer would be Kala Azar. The protozoa name of the protozoa is Lismaniensis. Lismaniensis genus. 
player affected part again rbc and what is the vector by what particular agent it gets transmitted that is sand fly clear moving on sleeping sickness sleeping sickness is also known as african trypanosomiasis also known as african trypanosomiasis now the names are a bit typical but you revise it 5 to 6 to 7 times and then uh, you don't have to i mean especially mug it up it will automatically just uh, go into your brain clear the protozoa for that is trypanosoma the protozoa for protozoa for sleeping sickness is trypanosoma now this one is a, this particular question is very important that what is the vector for sleeping sickness is testis fly don't get confused with this sand fly sand fly is for calazer and testis fly is for sleeping sickness now in examination when they give you they try to confuse you in this particular thing with you uh, they will give you both testis fly as well as sand fly clear so you have to remember it that which particular fly is responsible for which particular protozoan infection clear now the affected part is brain and the symptoms are sleep disorder sleep sleep disorder abnormal tone and mobility the person uh, in mobility clear so thank you so much uh, we'll see now in next lecture the further diseases please rate review and do share the lecture thank you so much